Hello, Buckeye Nation. That Indiana game right there was the heart and soul of college football. We all got to witness something extremely special on Saturday, and it brought a lot of us to tears. Thinking about it just makes me want to tear up all over again. That Cameron Babb touchdown was everything that is good about college football. It showcased grit, determination, and never giving up, even when surmounted by an insane amount of obstacles. It was beautiful and stands out as a highlight in this already incredible 2022 season that we've all been witnessing. Let's talk about that and more after the intro. Welcome to Buckeye Football Fangirl. My name is Lisa and I'm the gal behind this channel. If this is your first time here, it's great to meet you. Make sure to drop me a note in the comments below to say hey. Shout out to House M63 who dropped me a note last week. I appreciate it. For all who have tuned in more than once before, I really appreciate you more than words can ever say. The end of the regular season is fast approaching and I am so glad that you've been here with me on this wild ride. We truly have seen it all. Highly competitive games that were close until the very end, blowouts, games that weren't supposed to be competitive but left us all stressed. We've seen moments of high and moments of low. We've seen injuries, setbacks, and have seen a fair share of criticism aimed at these Ohio State Buckeyes. Our faith and hope in the Buckeyes to be able to push through everything to the end has ebbed and flowed throughout the season. But as we're coming into the final stretch of what looks like could be an unforgettable season, I wouldn't have it any other way. That game on Saturday had a truly magical ending and I'm hoping that it's foreshadowing a truly magical end to this season. That Cam Bab touchdown was everything that we needed to see before heading into our last tune-up game before the game. And I thought Sam Smooth captured all the feels with his tweet, simply in awe of Cameron Babb. Some battles in life you can't fight alone. His faith, his family, and the brotherhood have been with him every step of the journey. Today was a great testament to him and the culture inside the Ohio State football program. After the game, I kept going back to rewatch the videos of his touchdown and the celebration that he had with his teammates over and over again. The pure joy that they were all celebrating with was so infectious. I have mad respect for Bab and everything that he has had to overcome to even be out there on the field again. And that's just what it's all about. Overcoming obstacles, pushing through the pain, finding a way when it looks like there is none. The Buckeyes as a whole have had to do that this season, digging themselves out of the hole where the defense was an eyesore two years in a row, battling injuries with key playmakers like JSN, Trevion, and Mayan, playing in hurricane force wins, and fighting the narrative week after week that they only look good because they never play anyone with a pulse, or that any game they struggle in means that they deserve to drop in the rankings but they keep plugging away. And it felt like in that game against Indiana, they gave extra effort. There was that touchdown extension by Cade Stover, which yes, as Josh tweeted, looked like he was singing, I believe I can fly. There was the insane catch by Marvin Harrison Jr. where he looks like he has a robot leg to get his foot down in bounds. As Garrick from 11 Warriors tweeted, I know Marvin Harrison Jr. making incredible catches is nothing new, but this one on the sideline is something else. Look at where his body is and where his foot is. That was an insane photo capture and all credit to 11 Warriors for that. Then there was the touchdown run by the X-Man, which was captured best by this tweet from Fire Joe Woods. Xavier Johnson, are you kidding me? He weaved left, middle, right, back to the left for a 71 yard touchdown run. Lathan Ransom absolutely tore through the Hoosiers on Saturday too. I think we can all agree with the Cleveland Buckeyes tweet, seeing Lathan Ransom come back from that awful injury way sooner than anybody expected and now playing at this high level is so awesome. 
And these are just a few examples from the game, but there just seemed to be an extra effort from the entire team on the field. Even Stroud ran the ball again, this time lowering his shoulder, which I don't think I want to see him do too often, but I'm just glad that he pulled it off this time without getting hurt. All these things to me point to perseverance and reward. Just like how Cameron Babb persevered and got to see the reward, this Buckeye team has also been persevering, and if they continue to stay focused, they should get the reward that we've all been itching for. All right, let's switch gears a bit and talk about who's on deck this next Saturday. Maryland. Maryland currently sits with six wins and four losses. And last weekend, they got shut out by Penn State. I have the same hope that oh 10 tweeted. PSU taking it to Maryland like I hope Ohio State does. The Terrapins are led by head coach Mike Loxley, who has been the head coach since 2019. Loxley has quite a history at Maryland, serving in different positions there three separate times. He started out as a running backs coach from 97 to 02. Then he had stops at the University of Florida, Illinois, and the University of New Mexico before heading back to Maryland in 2011 as the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. He was named the interim head coach at Maryland in 2015 then he spent a few years at Alabama before stepping into the head coach position at Maryland. Talia Tagovailoa is the starting quarterback back for his third year there and is a fiery, tough competitor. Yes, he is the younger brother of Tua and unfortunately will always be compared to his older brother. As a middle child myself, I can relate to always being compared to your older siblings. He started his college career at Alabama, but transferred because he wasn't given the opportunity to compete for the starting position. And he and his family have a deep trust for Coach Loxley. He is a pass first quarterback with a fast release and an accurate arm, but he does have some wheels and he uses them whenever necessary. He did give his team quite a scare during game seven when he suffered an injury and had to be carted off the field. It ended up being a medial collateral ligament sprain and he missed one game before coming back against Wisconsin two weeks ago. Wide receiver Rakeem Jarrett currently leads the team in receiving yards with 406 yards. Jarrett originally committed to LSU, but he flipped to Maryland on signing day. He has really strong hands at the catch point, and he's been really creative with his routes. On the field, he is an exciting, explosive player to watch no matter what. When the ball comes his way, he finds a way to catch the ball, sometimes one-handed, sometimes jumping over the defender, and sometimes even going through the defender to make the catch. Tight end Corey Deitches has the second most receiving yards on the team with 386. Deitches is known for his speed in the middle of the field, though he's been getting fewer targets recently than he did early on in the season. Running back Roman Hemby leads the team in rushing yards with 815 yards. Not only that, but he also has 239 receiving yards, showing his versatility. On the defensive side of the ball, Bue Braid is a defensive back to watch out for. He leads the team in total tackles with 67. He also has two interceptions and two forced fumbles. Defensive lineman Greg China Rose has been disruptive on defense and currently leads the team with four sacks. Linebacker Jaishan Barham and defensive end Darrell Chami follow right behind him with three sacks and one force fumble each. Chami in particular has generated some pre-draft buzz because of his fluidity on the field and his dominance on the edge. He has been somewhat injury prone though, which has limited his production. However, he's definitely one to keep an eye on when healthy. The Maryland team is one that generated a lot of buzz themselves before the season, as many had high hopes that this would be a breakthrough year for them. However, the performance this season hasn't lived up to those high hopes for the year. And after seeing Penn State blow right through them last week, I have a hard time seeing how Ohio State will have any issues doing something similar. What are your thoughts going into the game? Do you think it's gonna be another game that we can all enjoy on our way to the game? Or do you think there's something that Maryland can throw at Ohio State that will make us all pull our hair out and scream at our TVs? Go ahead, drop me a comment below with your thoughts.
Last year, Ohio State beat the Terps to the tune of 66 to 17. And while I'm not sure that they'll score as many points this year, I think it will be a lopsided game. So far, TTUN has scored the most points on them. They scored 34 points on their way to beating Maryland. Let's see how many our beloved Buckeyes can score. I'm not trying to look past this Maryland game at all. However, November 26 looms large in my mind and I just cannot wait for the game. This tweet from the OSU kid resonates with me 100%. I'm so tired of all the talk. November 26 can't come soon enough. Let's soak up this Maryland game and try to enjoy this final chance to work out some of the remaining kinks before we get into the game that we've all been waiting for this season. And with that, I'll see you on the other side of the game. O-H.